You'll all know us for, for PRISM. You're, most of you in the room have PRISM. If not, uh, there might be a 2020 Pro. Any 2020 Pros in the room? Steve. <laughs> <laughs> that's the um, first. That's the first ever, yeah. So, um, so we, you know, that's our flagship product, okay? It's, it's what we do business with. It's why you're here. Um, and we, you know, that product has evolved through Tiger traffic, which most of you won't know what that was, um, Tiger 2000, Tiger 2020 Pro, Tiger Prism for the uh, 2016 version, and then finally 2020 version. Um, now, there's a lot of functionality that's been built into that across um, the, the years. Some of you, you know, on that UC analytics journey, if you're down the log and respond level, you probably are only using maybe 10% of the product's capability. And as you move up through the scale, then obviously you're using more and more. What we started looking at is that many organizations were discussing about, well, I maybe don't use all the functionality. What, what else can I do? Do I have to go for a full blown Prism deployment? Um, so we started to discuss, and it, it was by no coincidence that the bottom rung of the ladder was called Log, log and Respond. Um, and the idea being is that we can collect, process and retain information so that again, if you don't know quite what you want to do with it yet, but you don't want to lose it. Remember that diagram earlier, which is if you don't collect it in that first four hours, um, then it might be lost forever. Then ultimately there's now an entry level point called log and respond. And the third one we're going to talk about today um, is Q. So was anyone in the room at the last event? Yeah, so a couple of you will remember, oh, a few of you actually, will remember we talked about a potential product around data integration and visualization. Um, and what that was, was actually underpinned all of the directory integration work that we do with you around your users, your departments and organizational structures. Um, and we really, yeah, we invested heavily in that as a potential new product, but we had to make sure that it was, you know, it was stable and it worked before we sort of unleashed it on the world. Um, so we want to talk to you a little bit more about that today. So we currently have Prism, we've launched Log and Respond to new customers, um, and obviously we have Cube. So Log and Respond, um, this is, as I said, it's about storing data for as long as you need. Now, for example, you might have on your Cisco infrastructure Prism, you might then be able to say, right, I want to add Microsoft Teams, I want to add Zoom. That's great, but many customers aren't in that position yet. So the idea being is we don't think we want costing, we don't think we want directory management, we don't want lots of information about our network, but what we do want to do is make sure we don't lose that data, okay? So it's call logging, let's go back to basics, okay? Um, but it's just monitoring that information. It's unlimited storage, it can be in the cloud, it can be on-prem for you, um, but it's a secure solution as well. So it's built on the, the foundations of Prism, it's just modular and it's only exposing the bits that you, the customers might actually need. So we think this is you know, the gro growth of Tiger and with new uh, integrations coming along. We absolutely see this as being you know, kind of foundational and fundamental to us and, and how we grow the business. Um, think about when we talked about that agile development process. Again, it's get customers on board, get them actually having access to the data. And Steve has literally just been sat there looking at some of his data and experience, you know, gone, what's that? Why is that happening? And immediately started looking into something. Do bear it in mind if you maybe want, you know, other parts of your business that might just need basic data retention for other platforms. Let's say you run the, the Cisco you see, someone else does Teams and you have no correlation together. This could be an opportunity to say, look, start with this and do something different. Okay. Um, so I would encourage you, and, and so I'm probably going to manipulate the agenda a little bit, but we've got the demo stations at the back, and I don't know if you can see it, but Matt's actually got a cube diagram up. And so we're going to talk about cube today. And I think it would be really good for all of you to actually see it working, and I'm not the best at that, so I'm definitely going to encourage a bit more time for the demo stations so that you all have a chance to actually go and see the experts actually deliver it. Okay. But what were you cube today? So we came up with this on the basis that it's a service that sits in prison that you don't even see, okay? But it is a, an amazing tool. 
that effectively is able to connect to all of your different data sources. It's able to extract that information. It can convert it, transpose it, translate it. It can do lots of, actually, I have to be careful with translation, not language translation. Um, so what it will be able to do is you know, bring that data together. Now, we are going to show you um, today and launch it because we're actually going to give this software away for free to end users, okay? Now, as much as you're all commercial enterprises, we actually feel that this is a tool that could really work within both consumer and business, okay? So we just wanna get it into the hands of people. Now, you can see on the screen, and like I said, I wanna give Matt more time, but as a, a system here, you can create diagrams, and a diagram is effectively a process flow or a, a way of integrating data. Um, and on the right-hand side, it's a drag and drop. What you see is what you get kind of interface, and then you can do all your kind of data entry. You can do all of your kind of connections. And ultimately, we will be growing it so that you can add pallets into it, okay? And within here, you can see this is actually our website that we're launching, okay? So it's cube.network. You can go to that website today, and you can see some information about the tool. There's a video on there. And ultimately, um, you know, we want you to try it, okay? It won't be available today. It's going to be during this month, and there's just a downloadable uh, program on there. Um, you'll be able to install it onto your home computer. You can obviously try it on your work biz uh, business computer, but do speak to your uh, IT admins just to make sure they're okay with that, all right? But this is where you will go to be able to access this tool. And like I said, the experts are at the back and they, and certainly Phil, it's very much you know, Phil's brainchild as well. Um, and they can talk about it far more eloquently than I can. This is a, looks like a very complex diagram, but it's actually something quite simple. So what we're doing is we're looking at the data sources on the left here. So these are the data sources that we can gather information from. Um, so we can look at things like um, Excel spreadsheets, CSV files, SQL servers, um, and importantly here the ODBC links, so things that don't that aren't supported here, you can also use the ODBC links to, to gather that information. Once you've then dragged one of these items on, you then configure, configure these by coming into here, then you choose where your file is, you do an and analyze on this file. It will then ask, well, which sheet do you want? So if you've got multiple sheets on a spreadsheet, you can then look to choose which sheet. Um, and then there's some inbuilt custom settings here that allow you to then choose which row and stuff. And then importantly, it then pulls out all the information from the columns, including things, you know, if you're looking at, um, say, Active Directory, it will list all of your Active Directory columns or it could be the Azure AD where you're pulling through all the extra columns of information here. Then once you've got that information, what you've got the ability then is to transform that. So the whole point of these diagrams are to do repetitive tasks, something that you do on a regular basis and you don't want to keep going into your spreadsheets and doing VLOOKUPs on SQL servers, dragging and dropping stuff in and so on. So the point here is, is that you you put in your source data, you apply your business rules here by using your transforms, and then out the other side, you can get it to push data to set locations. That could be a, a, an FTP site somewhere. It could be a shared drive on your network that, that then gets updated. So using these transforms, for example here, sorry about these clicking bits here, what we've got is a set operator. So what I've got now is I've got two completely spread different spreadsheets from two different departments, okay? But they contain roughly the same information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join the two files together by going right, these files on these columns on the left match these columns on the right, chuck them all together to make a super set of data. I've then got at the bottom here then two spreadsheets. One contains all my users and then one at the bottom here contains all my cost center information. Now, because they're completely separate from each other, so I've gone to my HR, got all my departments and cost centers, 
and then I've gone to another department to get all of my users and um, some information here. But importantly, I've got a thing here that, that contains a department. So what I can do is join the two spreadsheets together. So it doesn't contain my cost center or any additional information. So what I can do is say, if the field matches here, join the two together. So rather than me having to do a VLOOKUP every time I update a file, this will do it automatically. <coughs> then once it goes through, it, it will join the data on the additional bits here. So this is telling me how many emails a person and stuff sent. And there's some additional bits in, in, in here. But importantly then, I then have a split. So from my department, the, the, the HR department, they sent me a long string of information. And that long string of information is broken down by everything before the hyphen is column A. Everything until um, the hat symbol should be going into a tiger department, then another hyphen, and so on. So I've got a single string of information that contains lots of information that I'm then splitting down to create four fields of information that I can then use later on down in my diagram to, um, to do maths on, okay? And this will make more sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this diagram now. So it's gonna go and take all of these bits here I think I may know why, because oh, it's because I had the diagram open on the other screen. And what you can do is you can then add these things called watch points, and through each line it goes through, you can visualize that data here. So I can see that data coming through. So it's telling me I've got these extension numbers on these CDR sources in this location, and this is the IP address of the handset. And then through the bottom here, um, if I show you here, the first part here gives me all of my staff names, but doesn't give me their cost center. So we've looked up that data by doing the join. And you can now see on the right hand side is now I've got a cost center, a department and a special field that I'm going to split up to give me more information. And as I said, at each step, I can visualize this data and go through and see what's happening to that data. And I can make sure that it's doing what I expect it to do. So you can see here, uh, is it before, hang on, can I click after? That's the one. So before it outputs, it's split that field that's on the right hand side, and it's given me additional fields. And it's then exported that data to a CSV file that I can open up here. It's also taken that data and added up data from there. So the whole point of this is to look at how many emails each department has sent. So what it's done is it's taken all of the department information, it's looked at how many emails have been sent by that department and how many that department has received. So it's taken those four spreadsheets at the beginning, it's done all of the work on it, and then dropped out some calculations here, which I'm then gonna drop off on my SharePoint folder, and that's gonna update the business straight away with what, what, I've, what I've done without me having to manually move it. Um, then down here, it's done something slightly different. So on the same diagram, it's taken the same information, but this time it's, it opens up. It's now done it by cost center as well for me, okay? so. Same diagram, same set of information, but it's output it in two separate formats that I can then pass to the business. And that just helps me speed things up that all I'm doing is gathering the information from multiple departments, I'm dropping it into a single location, I'm clicking the play button, and it's automatically moved it on to the business without me having to email it to them without me having to inform anybody that I've done it, it's just pushed all that information out for me. There are lots of things within the transforms that you can do um, in here, um, as well as where you can push the data to here as well. Um, so just for some other examples in here, try to see if I can find a... No, it's looking for a, a SQL Server one. So 
anybody that uses SQL Server. Um, yeah. So what this is doing here is it takes two SQL Server sources. It goes and looks at the tables and here it's going to go and look at the AdventureWorks database. And the great thing about this, again, anybody that uses SQL, you can either go and look at the database objects. So if you're not entirely sure what your schema looks like, you can go into here and look at your different schemas, as well as looking at different views as well within here. So you, it'll come up with there's any views available. Um, so in here, if you've got a view available or what tables are available, and you can preview these tables before you actually execute anything, as well as doing things like custom SQL queries to gather custom information in um, and then exporting it. And anybody that does use SQL, sometimes exporting masses amounts of information from it is very difficult through some of the tools. So this really does help as well. And as I said, it can push it into different directions, which also helps from there. Thanks, any, Matt. Any questions? <laughs> can you do API calls from it? <laughs> <laughs> with, pr with certain palettes. Yes. It's, but it's built into the software. Yeah. So that they are they are palette options. Mm -hmm. So yes, there are some palette options that are doing API calls. So we're generally going to shrink that yeah. any commercial API. That, so we we'll probably have a suite of SAP or a suite of um, Salesforce or a suite of Zoom or MS Teams, so pre-built palettes that invisibly connect to API. Yeah. But um, a generalized API source palette item is something that I'm very keen to put on the system. Sorry, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> there's a delayed reaction for me. I know you've been using this behind the scenes in a couple of really great business yep. wins. So from my perspective, rather than demonstrate that, just a kind of like a 30 second overview of a customer environment and how, how okay. you've really organised yep. that time, effort and simplified the process would be yeah. really great. So I had an international customer that... Um, had four departments that refused to talk to each other, completely just would not talk to each other. But what they would do is give it to the uh, the head of telecoms, these four files, and she was then having to manually take bits from here, bits from here, bits from here, bits from here, to, to make something that's useful for her. For a directory. For a directory. Um, but the trouble was, is every time she got that up to date, a week later, it would all change. And then she'd have to go through the manual process again of doing all these moves and changes. So with Cube, um, I sat down with her and we did a lot of work um, and all the manual changes she was doing, we can do things called replaces. So for example, when she has the word ENG in one column, we could update that to say the word England every time, okay, to make it more readable for the end users. So we were putting all, all this logic in um, for her and all she was doing then is dropping her four files in, clicking the play button. It gave her a nice clean Excel file at the end of it that she delivered to the business. So it took her, it was taking her around about two days per month. Um, after we'd been through the process, it was taking her about 45 seconds. So it, it was a massive win straight away for her. Um, uh, Go on, one more. <laughs> Um, we were, well, one of the examples there was that the um, we were taking stuff from HR because completely away from telecoms data entirely we were doing this for. they We had to marry up some HR data to push back into another system. So we were taking all the information from the customer. We were manipulating it through, well, not manipulating, but massaging the data through to put it in a format that they could then import back into the HR system. So... We were cleaning up the data as we were going, and as I was sending it to them, they were going, right, well, this bit and this bit needs to be changed. We could put the replaces in to make those changes each time. Um, so when next time they come along, we were just dropping the files in, clicking the play button, and FTPing it straight to them. So I was getting an email with the files. I was dropping them onto our server, clicking the play button, and it would then mysteriously then end up on there. 
through the magic of uh, the internet on their server without me emailing it back to them or anything. So, yeah, it's been used not just for telecoms data. So, you know, with HR data, it's quite an important part. You know, we keep it clean and up to date. Thank you. And I think that's actually a really important thing to, to touch on today is that it might not be you in this room that's actually got the best application or usage for this. But again, I encourage you to look at the site, share with your colleagues, those that will maybe have an interest in, in discovering a bit more about this. And we'll be happy to talk to everybody, not just, just you guys in this room. Yeah, I think, I think the, 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 the takeaway from it is if you've got a process that you're doing that's taking you six, eight hours in a month, is there a way that we can you know look at the product to say, right, well, if it's just manipulating data, can we do something with it to you know, speed up the eight hour process? So you know you can have an early Friday afternoon and pretend you're doing the work in on that instance, okay? So yeah. You've got okay. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> right. Thank, Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Um, and, yeah, I, I think so. Just to say, you know, it, it will be on the website. So it's a shrink wrapped as phil says but sort of streamlined version that we're giving away for free to get people interested to look at it yeah use it um obviously if you've got a particular business need then you do have cube on your systems today and in certain licensed versions we will have different palettes to steve's question about apis about integrations into prism so one of the other use cases we've had is where customers are using it to connect in to prism and then be able to, like Matt said, drop files on SharePoint to then power other dashboards in other systems like Power BI. So, you know, think a bit wider.